G'day Internet, Max Wright here, and we have a special guest today, um, all the way from the other side of the world, but he's one of my favorite um, crypto and Bitcoin analyzers, um, he's an important influencer in the space, and he's got some really good insights. So I'm very ha happy to have him on the show here today. Dr. Bruin, thanks so much for being here, buddy. Hey, Max. Awesome. Thank you for having me, and it's great to be here. Yeah, well, I mean, I, I wanted to chat to you for a little bit. I think it's been a, it's been over a year since we last chatted, but with the with the bear market, I got a bit slack on making content. So good to be ramping up again now, because you know I wanted to start. We we, we just had this discussion off camera that you know so many people make the mistake, and it's so easy for our business at the peak of the mania, at the peak of the insanity. Everyone wants to know about Bitcoin, and it's just that's for us. It's like the worst time because it's like we're torn. We want to grow our businesses. But at the same to token, we don't want to lead our lambs to slaughter. It's like, hey, guys, watch our content. And now don't buy Bitcoin. You know, wait until we say so. But now's the time. We're in. So it's a, it's a very tough time for us because we want to do the right thing by people. We want to do the right thing by customers. For the, I'm very, very um, pleased. All the guys who are watching this video now, you are the smart money. You are thinking it through and you're like, okay, no one's talking about Bitcoin. You know, the price is a little bit suppressed. It's been really boring for a whole, for a whole month, I think, just going completely sideways. But let's talk a little bit about what your strategy is uh, for right now about positioning yourself for the next bull run. Yeah, so it's it's always so interesting to me, the human psychology part of, of investing, not just even with crypto, I guess it's just investing in general. When the markets are down and it's the absolute worst sentiment and, and everything feels like it's, it's going to crash, you know, that's when people walk away. They sell their investments for like a 90% loss and they walk away. And they get involved at the very top when Bitcoin's at new all-time highs. Everyone's like, oh, you know, it's all over the media. Taxi drivers are talking about it. Bitcoin's at 70,000, 90, 100,000. And they're mortgaging their house to be able to buy some Bitcoin. And that is the exact opposite of what you're supposed to do if you want to make money with, with crypto and any type of investment, really. So I think we've been through a brutal bear market in 2022. But that has been very much on track with the 2018 cycle. Um, pretty much identical, actually, the four-year cycle. 2018, we had that bear market. 2022, we had that bear market. And it bottomed towards the end of 2022. And since then, we've gone from about 15,000 in Bitcoin to now almost 30,000. And interest is still pretty dead, which is, is interesting because we have the next halving event in April of 2024. And historically, that halving event has kicked off every major bull market cycle. 2020, 2017. So we've got the next one coming up and that is, it's going to happen. That's not a, like a maybe or a potential or something like that. It will happen. And it's going to cut the new issued supply in half by Bitcoin from that point forward. So that's going to very likely again, uh, kick off a bull market or increase the price because the miners have to still spend the same amount of money on their electricity and their hardware and everything. But now they're getting half the rewards. So usually that, that price has gone up to compensate for that. And I think it's going to happen again. And I think this time, actually, it might even front run. So where everyone's expecting, you know, maybe 12 months after the halving, we get our peak or something like that. Maybe we are already in this bull market right now. And we just continue to grind up towards that halving and then go parabolic and maybe peak, you know, three to six months after the halving. That's kind of what I'm thinking at this point. Interesting perspective. I hadn't heard that one. So... I, I appreciate how the cycles are just a little bit different each time. And because they're becoming somewhat predictable, that does produce a lot of front running. So your, your idea makes a lot of sense. I know. So I, I, I thought it was really interesting, a massive run up in 2019 before that halving, where I think Bitcoin went from, I think, 3,000 to almost 15,000, if my memory serves, but then came all the way back down to 3,000. And like in the year before, we just didn't see that. It was just a long, slow grind up for three years. This one had a big front running spike and it was too much too soon, crashed down, and then we went back up for another one. And you're thinking, um, rather than the, 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 the early part being going too early, you think the second parabolic part might come too early. I hadn't heard that perspective. And that's a very interesting thought because it's, it's never the same. It rhymes, but it's never the same. And so that's a new take. And I kind of quite like that. Do you have any uh, you know, data points or evidence to kind of support that? Or is just where did you come across this uh, idea? So it kind of also ties in with the bigger macro kind of outlook um, where if you, if you pull up the chart of the dollar index and you do that over the last, say, six years or so, you can see that the crypto bull market specifically happened when we got major downtrends in the dollar index. It's completely inverse. It's amazing how that works. 
And basically at the turning point of the dollar index, when that started going up again, that is when our bull markets peaked. It happened twice. And right now the dollar index chart is trending down on the weekly chart. So if that continues going lower, then basically we could get a melt up kind of, uh, you know, where both stock markets and crypto just go a lot higher, where it's the same thing like with the, the crypto psychology, you know, everyone's only wanting to get involved when it's super high and everyone gets panicky when it's when it's going lower. The same thing we saw with stock markets in 2022. Everyone was bearish. Everyone thought we we're going to repeat 2008. We we're going to crash. Everything was done. There was talks about recession. You know, people worried about banks. And you saw that retail and funds were net short in 2022. And as a result, this whole year, we've just gone up. We've squeezed everyone. Everyone was wrong, right? But they're still betting on the short side. So I think what we can get is we get this continuation of the stock markets, S&P 500, the Dow Jones Industrial Average, the NASDAQ, all going to all-time highs, squeezing everyone out. And then when everyone flips bullish right at the top or new all-time highs and no one expects it, then I think we get our crash. So that kind of runs in with the, the front-running scenario where for the next six to 12 months, potentially, we still go higher before everything crashes. And that would also kind of be with crypto. Gotcha. So that's kind of the, the melt up concept. So, so you think even stocks and every, like everything could go up here for a little while before there is a, a crash in the, in the broader markets? Yeah, I think so. I actually said in, in December, I put out a tweet where I said I thought uh, US stock markets were going to go to all time highs before we get a major crash. And so far, I mean, we're coming pretty close. Dow Jones is like 6% from the all time high, uh, S&P less than 10%. And uh, it's, it's looking like we're going to continue higher. We still haven't had a first rate cut yet from the rate hike cycle. So actually, if you go back and you look historically um, at the rate hike cycles and how that ties in with market crashes, what we get is we get this rate hike cycle for extended period of time, usually over a year. And then we get the first cut, right? So it just keeps going up, up, up. Then they make the first cut, not a pause, an actual cut. And then usually what you see, if you go back at the 2000 crash, 2008 crash, it usually comes six to 12 months after that first cut announcement. So, so far, we've been just hiking the rates for more than a year now, I think. We haven't had a cut yet. So that also ties in with the melt-up scenario where until we get that first cut, I, think, I still think there's a window where it just continues going higher. Um, no one's expecting that because they're all talking about recession. We had the fear and the FUD with you know the Silicon Valley banks and all that kind of stuff. And everyone's like, oh, we have to short, it's gonna crash. And obviously when everyone bets on one direction, it usually does the opposite. And then when everyone flips long again, it reverses and then we get our crash. So it'll be interesting to see how that plays out. It's just my theory for now, but so far it's uh, kind of on track to do that. Yeah, interesting. Very interesting. Completely agree with you. Now, I know um, you had some fantastic calls in the last bull cycle. You made a lot of your customers millions of dollars um, with some great calls in the altcoin market and, and the timing of those things. Uh, is am I remembering correctly that you there were some other um there were there were some specific plays that you mentioned last year that were fantastic? Can you remind me what they were? A and then B. Let me know if you're seeing anything really special um in the in any kind of just just outside of just straight up Bitcoin long term investing. Yeah, so uh, I've been in the crypto space since 2017 full time with altcoins and stuff. So uh, sharing education, I got my own membership, stuff like that, but. Um, one of the calls that I had that did phenomenal was in 2017, I found this coin called Lend. Back in the day, it was called Lend, right? And it was actually the first DeFi coin. It had an actual working product. And you could actually go on their website, you could connect your wallet, and you could put in your coins as collateral and take out a loan against that. And it was still very basic. You know, there's lots of lending programs now, but that was the first one that actually worked. And they ICO'd in 2017. They obviously dropped a lot in the 2018 bear market, but it actually went on to do like a 2000 X from the bear market lows. And uh, I was pretty uh, you know, vocal about lend and stuff and believing in the product. A lot of people who listened to me and bought in the bear market lows, they did pretty well, 50 X, 100 X, 150 X. So that was a really good call. Nice. Yeah, that was a good one. And there's just so much opportunity. So I think, you know, Bitcoin, you probably agree with me, it's fantastic but it's already at 30,000. You know, even if it does a 10X from here, which would be pretty phenomenal, it's still a 10X. And at that point, like altcoins, I think you're going to do like 50X, 100X. So, you know, if you don't have a lot of capital 
and you want to make those big gains, like Bitcoin isn't the play, in my opinion, anyway. Um, you know, if you want to make a 30x or a 50x or a 100x, you got to go for the lower cap, the altcoins, the newer projects. And uh, that's, that's, in my opinion, the only way to do it. So it's interesting. There's always like a narrative in every single cycle. You know, in 2017, it was the ICOs um, and those did incredibly well. And that that is all gone. Last cycle, we had DeFi, we had Metaverse, we had NFTs that did really well. Um, but again, those all came and went. And if you get in early on those trends, you can make phenomenal upside. But the thing is, you can't you can't hold them also. So timing is everything, you know, like we're still so early in this crypto space. So I think the key is you got to identify when the cycle is starting, when we're in the bullish conditions. Then you got to pay attention to which trends are developing, which narratives are developing, whether that's, you know, gaming or um, AI or whatever the next trend is going to be. Hop on that early. And then when everything starts getting too euphoric, you know, and everyone's talking about it and gains are insane through the roof, then it's just time to walk away and, and realize some really good gains. Nice. Do you have any uh, clues or insights as to what the next narratives might be yet? I still think gaming is going to be a big one. There's a lot of people working towards that. Um, AI could still potentially be a play. We had a bit of a run earlier in the year in AI, but I think that's still only getting started. I mean, if you see what's, what's happening with ChatGPT and Microsoft and Google all doing this AI stuff, um, I think that's going to come back. But um, I really do think it's important that the, the whole bull market really kicks off into that, you know, kind of frothy acceptance of, okay, the bull market is back. Um, I don't think we're quite there yet. I think when Bitcoin starts hitting maybe 50,000, 60,000 again, then retail seriously starts to get interested. And then we go into that kind of mania, altcoins start to follow. So you want to get in before that happens and not wait till it's too late, you know? Yeah. Okay. So, I, I mean, I completely agree with you. If you want the 100Xs, I don't think Bitcoin's going to do that for you anymore. But just a little advisory to people um, watching this is that you just have to understand that while some coins are going to 100X, some coins are going to go to zero and you're going to get the timing wrong. And so making smart plays, I highly recommend anyone who wants to make those kinds of plays. It's a, it's a very worthwhile endeavor, but you really want to get some good advisors on your team to uh, make help you make those good calls. Um Let's. I, I, I want to stay a little bit on this. I have a specific one. There's, there's only there's one project that I want to work so much. Um, I think it's like a it's kind of essential in kind of decentralizing everything, and that is uh, Thorchain and Rune. Do you pay much attention to that? Do you familiar with that project? We haven't spoken about it off camera, but it's it's one of the few altcoins that I pay close attention to because I really want it to succeed. I think it's a, an important part in defeating the Matrix. I do. I do know about it. I've dived into it. Um, I am hopeful for it too, because it's actually the only project of its kind where you can fully decentralize, swap Bitcoin into altcoins and exchange stuff without uh, a central party. And I know there's these decentralized exchanges, right, DEXs, but that's still not quite the same as what, what Thor is trying to do, Thorchain and Rune. And uh, hopefully they'll succeed, but it, it's a pretty complicated platform i think to make it work it is a very complicated platform yeah. but to, from what i'm seeing it's, it's absolutely working um for the the base case uh is working really well they're integrated into a lot of wallets now and you can do um DeFi swaps native chain to native chain in a, a lot of main wallets now and they're moving on to to bigger things like loans and other things so i am hopeful i really do think it's an essential part of the um of the entire environment. So I'm really hoping it, it, it works, but time will tell. It's a, it's, it is a, it is a risky project for sure. Um, anything else uh, that you want to talk about that you really think people need to understand with this mindset going into the next phase, you've kind of suggested that yes, now is the accumulation phase. Are you accumulating alts yet or are you accumulating Bitcoin still? Yeah, I've been for the last uh, six, six to eight months, I've just been accumulating dollar cost averaging, I mean, altcoins are pretty much still down way over 90% from their highs. So I think it's still a great time. Obviously, the right ones, you know, there's a lot of like complete garbage coins that you shouldn't accumulate because they might never go up again, even in a bull market. But solid projects, um, you know, and obviously you need to research or you need someone to tell you about that or you need to dive into that. But I think it's great to accumulate now. Um, and the window for that. So basically, I have two strategies. I have two portfolios. One is just for spot where I accumulate and hold till the next euphoria. That can be one to two years, in my opinion. Um, mm -hmm. So just accumulate, hold, and then sell when everything gets crazy. And the second uh, 
part of my portfolio is just more of an active trading thing where, you know, some of it I do trading with futures and leverage and some of it just in and out different coins and things like that. Um, and I think it's good. I don't think you should ever like try and trade with your spot portfolio, you know, like if you try and, and trade the swings, you know, you try and buy Bitcoin at 20K and try and sell it at 30 and buy it back at 25. Like you might get lucky one or two times with that, but you do it wrong one time and you miss the big move. And then, you know, you've got a big problem. Yeah, I agree. I think I'm more of a get involved in the big cycles and, and don't worry about the little stuff. That's awesome, Dirk. Thank you so much, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you'd love to have Dirk back. I think we'll have him back a lot more coming up in the next bull market. Uh, hit the like, hit the subscribe button. Dirk, thank you so much, and we'll see you guys soon.